Oh, the Chiefs ran out of miracles, but don't worry. They're still the Chiefs. And there's only a couple of teams that can even be on the field with them. We'll talk about today here on Locked On NFL. The barbershop is open and Tony Wiggins has a chair for you. He's ready with some real NFL talk. The local experts of Locked On bring their expertise. And Wiggy is ready with his clippers and shears. Sit down and enjoy. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Locked On NFL, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with the help of local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am the barber, the host of this show. Tony Wiggins joined today by Locked On NFL expert Julian Council, who's made it back from Europe. And today, here's what we're going to talk about on Locked On NFL. The Lions are roaring. And they beat up on a team that didn't have not one fingernail in their paw yesterday. And that's the Jaguars. We'll talk about the highs and the lows. And Daniel Jones also, as of this morning when we record, got benched. Finally, two years too late. All right, right in the middle, the Chargers are absolutely for real. Anybody that thought they weren't and the Steelers, uh, you got proven wrong real quick. And the Falcons are so lucky that everybody in the NFC South is banged up because they would be in last place with the way that they played the last couple of weeks and the chiefs run out of miracles, but wait a minute. Now, hold on. They're still the chiefs. Don't get it twisted. Don't be making them the, the underdog. Now you got to leave them as the hunted because you, if you give them the gun, you get yourself hurt and upset. We'll talk about all of that today here on locked on NFL. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by, Hillsdale College. That's right. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Shout out to the everydayers for joining us here every day. What did they join? They joined us, me, Julian Council here on a Monday. What's going on, my brother? We ready to get going here now. Yeah, let's do it. Chiefs, Bills, great game and Pittsburgh and Baltimore as well. One of the better Sundays we've had so far this year. Ready to talk about it. One of the better Sundays that also ended really, really well last night. Maybe not for the Chiefs, I mean, the, the Bengals, but it did show a little bit about the Chargers and their resolve, and we'll discuss that. All right, let's not bury the lead here. The Chiefs finally lost. So Larry Zonka took his uh, proverbial drink and his toast yesterday with one of his former buddies who was a longtime uh, fan of uh, the team that was, you know, Kansas City, they, Buffalo. He was a Buffalo fan. He took a shot with him. He said, hey, man, look, we beat him, right? The Chiefs are no longer undefeated. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has basically said that really wasn't their goal. You know, it was nice why it lasted. But I get a feeling that people are going to start, Julian, thinking that anybody can do that to them, and that's just not the case. Yeah, we'll see. I feel like all year long they've been getting away with it. If you look at some of the results, like opening night, Isaiah likely toenail away from that going to overtime, potentially hard by going for two. They beat the Bengals by a single point. They beat the terrible Falcons only by five points. The Chargers by a touchdown. The Raiders by a touchdown. The Bucks by six, and they're banged up. Broncos should have lost that game last week, and then they finally lose to Buffalo. It's not like they've been going out there and just road grading through the NFL. They've been getting away with it all season long, and the rent finally came due Sunday afternoon in Buffalo. The rent absolutely became due. Now, to their credit, they're going to get some people back. They also didn't have their kicker yesterday, and it, it may have affected some of their decisions. I don't know if it quite did or not, if they were ever put in those positions. The thing that shocked me was their defense. Their defense has been lights out while their offense has been struggling with. Their defense got, got bullied around and pushed around, especially in situational football. Let's hear from a man, Chris Clark of Locked on Chiefs. And the Kansas City Chiefs drop their first game. They lose to the Buffalo Bills 32-21 in a game that really they didn't really ever get started on offense. You look at the first couple of drives, Kansas City threw a pick on the f- second play of the game. That started off and got the Bills going. The Bills drove straight down the field and got a touchdown on that drive. Kansas City's offense, while they were able to put some points on the board at times, they couldn't sustain drives on a regular basis. They continued to go three and out, and that is not how they win games. This team has been winning because they consistently have been moving the ball and getting long drives, 10 play plus drives. They only think, I think they only had one of those in this game, and it wasn't enough. They take on their first loss against the Buffalo Bills. They're going to see them again later this season, much more on locked on Chiefs. 
Julian, one of the things that I uh, extract from this is when teams are great, a lot of times opponents, especially opponents that have a history of not playing well against them or mm -hmm. like a history of what the Bengals have. The Bengals did it again last night. They always lose these games late and they're looking around. There was no woe is me from the Bills. There wasn't. There was no conceding anything. There was no – Josh Allen has always been considered one of the three or four best quarterbacks, and everybody was looking up at Patrick Mahomes. I didn't see a dude yesterday that gave a damn about Patrick Mahomes. They didn't concede, and that's how you have to be when you're trying to knock someone off of the mountaintop. Well, yeah, I mean, that's been the case the last couple of regular seasons when Buffalo's won this game. But when it comes to the playoffs, they can't beat Kansas City. So I know a lot of people are saying yesterday's game doesn't matter because Buffalo's got to do it in the postseason. Well, it does matter because Buffalo, yeah. who has been, in my opinion, a better team than Kansas City, the point differential, 106 plus 106. Kansas City's at 49. They have not been one of the better. I mean, they have obviously been the top team in the ASC based off a record. But when you look at how they've won those games, and I mentioned they played a bunch of one-score games. Buffalo has a better point differential than them. Pittsburgh, Baltimore does. The Chargers and Bengals in their own division also have a better point differential, which is why I said they've been getting away with it. And it's hard for me to sit here and say that they have been the best team in the NFL, let alone the AFC. Like Buffalo knocks them off the perch yesterday. Pittsburgh gets a huge win. Baltimore was so close week one. I would take the Steelers or Bills right now, and the loss yesterday opens up the door for either Pittsburgh to have a home throughout the playoffs and that bye, or Buffalo. And I'm not sure if Kansas City, the way they played this year, is winning two straight years on the road at Highmark Stadium, or if they're going to Pittsburgh at Akersher and being that Mike Tomlin team that now looks different for Russell Wilson, even though they settled for a billion field goals on Sunday, I'd be concerned because Kansas City still has Pittsburgh. They still have to play the Chargers and the Broncos. And I'm not going to sit here and say with absolute confidence they're winning all three of those games. And no, I'm not going to. By the way, as well. Yeah, you, you make a great point. Uh, I, I'm not really the debate culture guy. But I am a dude that always kind of takes the, you know, I'm a barber, man. That's what we do. We're contrarian by nature. So we take the other side of it. The other side of it is that was a very winnable game yesterday, right? Buffalo sure. played lights out. And they were still, like, within one possession before they gave up that fourth down run to uh josh allen so here's what i'll say earlier i heard you say almost barely all of that still counts in the w column they still won so That's the key for true. me is are they going to learn from all of these close wins we talk a lot in college football about how these sec sec teams go through all of these battles so by the time they get the pressure situations in in playoffs or in, in the championship game they're battle tested and mentally they're used to it and they understand what it's like to be in those type of games well the chiefs have been in those type of games all year and they won nine of them and lost one that they very well could have won also from this point forward what do they learn and, and, and how do they move forward? And they still have that championship pedigree. All I'm saying is I don't think uh, – I'm glad, by the way. I'm glad, by the way, we have somebody other than Kansas City, Baltimore, and Detroit as the people that everyone thinks, oh, these are the only three teams. Now, no, you can't say that. You got to worry about Pittsburgh. You got to worry about Buffalo. You got to worry about the Chargers. I don't think you got – and you know what? You might have to worry about Philly a little bit. So mm -hmm. now this picture is becoming a little bit more clear where it's not as clear of who's going to win the championship. And if you had to get me to pick one team that will do it, I might still take Kansas City because they know how to do it. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue against that. Back back Super Bowl wins. And last year, that was a season where I don't think a lot of people thought they were going to be able to overcome the lack of receivers that they had. And that was a problem they had again on Sunday. Not like Buffalo wasn't in the same situation as they didn't have Keon Coleman, Dalton Kincaid as well. They were missing some of their guys, and they're already deficient as is that receiver heading into the season before making that Amari Cooper trade. And he made an amazing catch on Sunday. Did I just look at Kansas City, and like again, I bring the point differential – that is a pretty big indicator of which teams are truly good and which ones aren't. We're going to talk about one later on in the show that is a negative point differential, but somehow is leading their division. It's the Falcons. I just don't think Kansas City is as good as their 9-1 record. I think there are better teams in the AFC, and there is certainly a team I think is by far the best team in the NFL that would blow them out if they played today. Woo! <laughs> so... That being said, let's keep pressing on, man, and get some more of these gems from my man Julian here on Locked On NFL. And we'll do it by talking about the Chargers, a team that's right there in that division. And you mentioned that schedule that's coming up. The Chargers might actually be able to catch them.
and 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 get to the point where they get home field advantage. We'll talk about that and more here on Locked On NFL. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Hillsdale College. It's never too late to get smart, and it's even better to get smart when the classes are free. That's right. More than 40 free classes, online courses, including Constitution 101, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, and a brand new documentary style course on Marxism and Socialism and Communism. That's right, man. Our precious commodity is time, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? You can do it at Hillsdale College because the courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in whenever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. H I L L S D A L E dot E D U slash locked on. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is where you run your game, man. And all you got to do is download the app and use the code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 bet. I'll say it again. You're going to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup at Prize Picks after you download the app and put in the code locked on NFL. Now, it's player projections. You and millions of people have the choice to pick between two and six player projections. If you get them right, you can get paid. That's right. You can get paid at prize picks. All you got to do is say more than or less than at prize picks and get paid. Prize picks is where you have fun and win your money. All you got to do is go over there and download it, use Locked On NFL, and then run your game over at prize picks. All right. Keeping going here with Julian Council here on Locked On NFL with your team every day. Glad to have you over here. Uh, I'm sure the Charger fans right now, people out in L.A., the longtime Charger fans who are used to their team charging. And if you don't know what charging is, <laughs> we used to always say that on here when we had Drogi and Daniel Wade on from Locked On Chargers. Chargering means to play well the whole game, and then all of a sudden Brendan Staley would allow you to lose the game. And then y'all scratching your head wondering why you can't win, kind of like the Bengals have been doing lately, right? And that was charging. But at least the Bengals used to win sometimes. The Chargers used to do this all the time. No more. No more. They are now winning. And here's Drogamar from Locked On Chargers to tell you exactly how they're doing. Chargering no more. The Bolts hold off the second half barrage from the Bengals and beat them 34-27 to to advance to 7-3 and three on the season. This is David Drogamar of the Locked On Chargers podcast, and the Chargers were up big in this game. They were up 24-6 to six going into halftime. They were dominating on both sides of the ball. Justin Herbert was slinging it all over the yard. The Chargers defense was staunch in the red zone and even dragged down Joe Burrow three different times and then the second half hit and it was a completely different story joe burrow was letting it rip he threw three touchdowns in the second half came all the way back and tied the ball game at 27 and the chargers had one last opportunity and justin herbert put on his cape he hit lab mcconkey for 28 and 27 yards that set up jk dobbins for the walk off touchdown his second of the game and the chargers are firmly in the playoff hunt for more on this game and for more on the Chargers, please check out the Locked On Chargers podcast, your team every day. So everybody's acting like this three yards in a cloud of dust. Let me read some numbers to you. <laughs> Justin Herbert this season is completing 63.5% of his passes. It ain't great. For 2,100 yards, 13 touchdowns, and one interception with a quarterback rating of 102.1. Seems like somebody's had an impact on somebody by asking them to do a little bit less, but to be real efficient when they do ask them to do something. Yeah, and good point there about doing a little bit less because that was the case the first four weeks of the season where he didn't have over 200 yards passing. But since then, every game outside of the game against Tennessee a couple weeks ago has been 225 plus, and a couple of those have been really 275, 300 passing yard games like he did on Sunday where he had 297 yards and two touchdowns. He's outstanding, and we've known for a while that he's been outstanding. And finally, he gets an NFL head coach in Jim Harbaugh that has a physical run game and is going to take pressure off the quarterback but also has a quarterback in place in Justin Herbert who can make some plays. And and David brings up Lad McConkey. If you look at the rookie class in the NFL wide receiver, is there more 
important rookie receiver to their team this season than Ladd McConkey. Maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. down in Arizona, but Malik Neighbors plays for a terrible Giants team. Brian Thomas Jr., as you know, plays for a terrible Jags team. I can't look at another rookie wide receiver that has as big of an impact for a team that is in playoff contention like Ladd McConkey, who was outstanding at Georgia the last couple of years and helped them win those two national championships. So good to see him making plays, but great to see Justin Herbert finally with a real head coach and a Chargers team that, sure, they didn't charge her last night, but they still blew an 18-point halftime lead. Yeah. Now as a team that, like looking at Kansas City, I think they could still find a way to steal that AFC West. Yeah, and they blew that lead, and guess what? Normally in the past, they would have blew the game, but they didn't. And the yeah. thing is, is they blew the lead, and then they won the game at the end because they are no longer charging and because – uh, he basically turned them into Troy Aikman. Yeah, you super talented, but we ain't going to do all that. What we're going to do is we're going to learn how to manage and win football games. And then when we need you to be super talented, let it rip. Yeah, Clark Kent, like I said, Clark Kent was Clark Kent about 24 hours a day. Well, 23 and a half hours a day. He was only Superman, like 30 minutes. Yeah, and I mean, so how many teams do we know that have success, especially deep in the playoffs, that are throwing the ball 50 times a game? Like None. you got to be able to control it on the ground and at the line of scrimmage, especially like in the cold weather. And they're likely, unless they got to go to KC in the playoffs or maybe Pittsburgh or Baltimore, like they get home field, they're playing at home. So obviously in a dome. So we'll not have to worry about that, but that's what winning football looks like in January. And of course, in February, if you make it there. I'm glad you said winning football. That's a term I like. And it's very similar to a couple of other terms. One of them is complementary football. The other one is game management. And that is something that Jim Harbaugh does. All of those three things, you put them in, they have a lot of connecting meanings or connected meanings. It's probably just context when you think about which which term do I use? Well, which context are you talking about? Because they all kind of mean the same thing. We should take all of them all of them put them in a jar and shake it up and pour it on Atlanta because my man, my man Freeman is having a hard time trying to figure out. They are trying to give a division away when everybody's banged up, hurt, or retooling. These dudes just sitting there like sitting ducks saying, catch me if you can. Listen to Aaron Freeman from Locked on Falcons. The bye week came early as the Atlanta Falcons got absolutely destroyed and no-showed in a 38-6 loss to the Denver Broncos. I'm Aaron Freeman with Locked on Falcons. There's no better time for a week without Falcons football as the Falcons got absolutely destroyed in a Week 11 loss to the Denver Broncos, 38-6. Next week, the Falcons are thankfully off with a bye week, and it looked like they were ready to pack it in. The offense got put together one good drive at the start of the game. It fizzled in the red zone due to untimely penalties, and they packed it in thereafter. The defense, I have no idea where the defense is. So can someone get the Denver PD on the horn to put out an APB for 11 missing Atlanta Falcons players? It was the worst performance of the year for the Atlanta Falcons. I'm done talking about it. For more coverage of the NFL's most disappointing 6-5 and five football team, follow Locked On Falcons, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If they ain't careful, they're going to get caught. And I, I want to salute Denver real quick because I thought Sean Payton was doing a, a horrible job. They are way better, and they're another one of those teams uh, that are playing old-school football. Now, let's get to the Falcons. Um, I think every team, and you can speak on this, when Sean Payton left uh, the Saints, had a proverbial sigh of relief. No, y'all still got to see him because he still owns the division. He's just doing it from Denver. Every single time he plays a, a, an NFC South team, he, he steamrolls them this same way. Uh, the Falcons are sitting there, man. They better be. They better. They better get something going because if they don't, you can't back into the playoffs. At some point, at some point, somebody might catch them. Yeah, and I'm having a hard time seeing who's going to do that in the NFC South. Now you're right. Like they had the Chargers coming up after their bye week. They got the Vikings on the road. And they still have the commanders on the road. They got Raiders, Giants, Panthers. So we'll see. Because I, I, I wouldn't favor them against Chargers or the Vikings or against the commanders in any three of those games. So we're looking at what they're sitting at six and five, at least eight losses. Nine and eight, eight, nine going to get it done in the NFC South this year. And if that's the case, that gives Tampa an opportunity. They're going to get Mike Evans back at some point in time. I still feel like they're a talented team, not having Chris Godwin, which brutal when that injury occurred that hurts but also they already lost twice to atlanta so that helps the falcons as far as tiebreakers go and then with carolina their margin is so slim they still have to play the eagles they got the chiefs coming up after this weekend and i got the and the uh the cardinals as well i just don't know who is going to catch up to them like they may back into this thing at eight and nine the team i would look at would be tampa bay 
I don't think it's going to be the Saints, even if they've won two straight games with Darren Rizzi now as their head coach. And I don't think it's going to be the Panthers who have won two straight games against the same bad Saints and also against the Giants over in Munich. We'll see. But this is a bad team, man. Like I, I talked about earlier, point differential minus 30. The Bucs and the Saints have a higher point differential than the Falcons. 11 teams in the NFC have a better point differential than the Falcons. Like, this is not a good football team at all. And when they were having those wins against New Orleans in the, earlier in the year and against Atlanta on that Thursday night, we saw, like, this team is barely winning. The, like, like Kansas City in a way, except the Chiefs are actually a good football team. They were getting away with it. And, man, the rent has more than come due. They repossessed their home at this point in time. The Falcons... <laughs> are not a good football team. And we'll see if they can hold on, but NFC South continues to stank every year. Uh, the Falcons remind me that I saw a meme on 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 uh on social media. This is kid. He's in a diaper head, got him at the beach and the water's going crazy. The water's going crazy. And he's sitting there he's thinking he's drowning. They stood him up and the water was really like right where his shins are. I mean that's that's the Falcons. It's like it's like dude just get up and do something all you got to do is have a pulse and you'll walk into the playoffs but they don't seem to get that i tell you what somebody who does get it the lions and the jaguars got it for sure we're going to talk about them and also somebody else who got it daniel jones finally got his comeuppance or his come down it we'll talk about that here on locked on nfl There you go. Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by FanDuel. That's right. Our friends over at FanDuel can make you smile even when your team is absolutely terrible. And the reason they do that because they're America's number one sports book and you get a chance to win you some money. I know y'all don't want to bet against your own team, but guess what? If you root for a team like the one I cover, it might be necessary if you want to get paid. So get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, play, and so much more on the same page where you make your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join. You'll get $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Win your first $5 bet and you'll get $150 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Wrapping it up here on a Monday with Julian Council, locked on NFL and locked on Panthers. Um, we're going top to bottom here. Top to bottom. Let's talk about the Detroit Lions who... Yes, let's... Are le yeah, they're leaving no doubt. They're leaving no doubt about them. I'm gonna tell you something he did to Dan Campbell did to show you their mentality. I'll do it right after we hear from my man Matt Derry. The Detroit Lions continue to roll best start since 1934. They are nine and one as they pound the Jacksonville Jaguars 52 to six today at Ford Field. This was a, just obliteration from start to finish. Lions scored seven touchdowns. On their first seven possessions, Jared Goff, four touchdown passes, and he finally achieves that perser, a perfect passer rating of 158.3. This is the Jared Goff that has been putting up MVP numbers all season. He was in stride today and felt good. Defense was great against a porous Jacksonville offense, and the Lions cruise, spreading the football around and doing what they do best to get to 9-1. and one. Total yards, that would be 644, a franchise record. More coming up on a full edition of Locked On Lions. My man, Dan Campbell, go ahead. What'd you say? 644? Yeah, man. In a National Football League game? Yeah, man. Bro, it ain't, they ain't even half of it. You want me to, get, you want me to go ahead and get – see, we were, we were supposed to do something else, but you want me to go ahead and give it to you right now? I, well, I mean – No, no, listen I'll, to I'll, me. I'll, 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 let's talk. Let's talk Lions because the victors uh, they write uh, history. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Let's let's talk. Like I've been saying for weeks now, <laughs> this is clearly the best team in the NFL, and what they did to the Lions is wrong. Obviously, I mean, and for Jared Goff to bounce back after he was out there looking like Dwayne Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh, saying not one, not two, five picks, and still beating the Texans on Sunday Night Football. Credit to him, like, and what Ben Johnson has been able to do with him. 
and that offense. And I know for you, for your sake, I hopefully Ben Johnson likes uh, that Florida weather. Maybe he wants to live out there in Amelia Island. I don't know if he wants to do that or not, but the Lions are great. They're fantastic, and this is the best team in the NFL. And, again, if they play the Chiefs today, he's getting an ass kicked. They play Buffalo today. The Bills are losing by 10 points at least. No one's touching this team. As long as what they have right now, this nucleus, without Aiden Hutchinson, can stay healthy, this team is winning the Super Bowl, going away. All right, now check this out. So they got real close last year. They were the better team. They lost to the 49ers in every imaginable way you can, right? Murphy's Law. They are playing like a team that says none of that anymore. Let me explain to you what they did yesterday. It's 52 (laughs) to 6. Brian Thomas Jr., uh, Matt Jones lobbed a a pass up down the sideline. Brian Thomas Jr. went up and made a great catch, got both feet down, and here comes the safety. Bang. He didn't finish the catch outside. He got hurt on the play. The ball kind of was moving around. It was 52 to 6. They ruled the catch, and Dan Campbell challenged it. (laughs) I'm just telling you, dog. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, ain't none of that. What it is is if a fly comes into his space, and he has a can of raid and a sledgehammer. He says, no, put that spray down. I'm not only going to kill him. I'm going to make you feel it. They are playing and coaching like a team that knows something got away from him. And they said never, ever again. And I love that. And that kind of goes back to the hook and ladder. They ran to Panay Sewell also uh, earlier this season against the Cowboys, a team that they did not respect. I mean, the Jag side of things, I guess from an outside perspective, the NFL, what people talk about not for long, Sitting at eight and three last year, coming off of a AFC divisional round uh, trip to Kansas City where they were competitive in that game. Trevor Lawrence looked outstanding, and then everything fell apart with him getting injured and then them only being able to beat the Panthers where that was a game David Tepperstone drinks on fans. And now they sit here and they're one of the worst teams in the NFL again. And you go back to last year around this time when they were sitting at eight and three, the Texans. They had no idea what they were going to be moving forward. They didn't have mm-hmm. a quarterback. Um, you look, I guess, well, I guess even the year prior, let's say actually let's go back to the year prior when they were in the AFC Divisional round, the, the Texans didn't know who their coach was going to be, who their quarterback was going to be. You also look at the situation in Tennessee. Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, that was not going to be for long there with Mike Brabel as well. And now look at where the division's at. Or Indianapolis, they put back Anthony Richardson. We'll see what that looks like as they should be competitive. Are they going to be a division favorite moving forward? No. Houston, they've had kind of struggles this season, but still that's going to be the division winner likely. And then looking also at Tennessee, like they're still bad, but eventually they'll find their quarterback. And you had a head start for the first time in a long-ass time. Jacksonville had really the, the solid footing in the AFC South. And now, now look at you. It's unfortunate. Hopefully – with Trevor Lawrence being there and that contract, which does not look worth it through the first 10, 11 games of it. Hopefully they can get a, co- a coach like a Ben Johnson who can work with them and really innovate that offense. But right now the Jags are back to being the Jags, I guess. Yeah. And one thing about Trevor, I will tell you the last two weeks without him, anybody that thought it was his fault can revisit that. There's somebody said yesterday, Trevor ought to be considered the MVP for having them competitive because the last two weeks <laughs> they have looked absolutely atrocious on offense they have less than 500 yards the last two weeks on offense um but maybe a good story though mac jones hometown kid yeah it feel it felt good it felt good <laughs> until you saw what, what happened the last two weeks yeah it feel good all that feel good matters it doesn't matter a hill of beans and nobody think about that no more i'm telling you it's like okay well, yeah it was nice man i appreciate you being at the crib but uh i'm gonna tell you who else don't run out of steam the giants we're going to hit this real quick. We got to give Patty some love, Patricia Trainey, because this happened right before we broke uh, to record this show. The decision is in, and the New York Giants are benching starting quarterback Daniel Jones in a move that was largely anticipated. Jones, a six year veteran, has struggled with his consistency, particularly since returning this season from a torn ACL suffered last year. The team is currently in the midst of a five-game losing streak and is looking for a spark these remaining seven games. That spark, they hope, will come in the form of Cedar Grove, New Jersey native Tommy DeVito, who will get the start ahead of the veteran Drew Locke when the Giants host the Bucks on Sunday. Listen, man, they finally did what everyone thought that they should do. And I think what this is, is this is Brian Debo saying, hold on, let me show you what I can do without him being on the field or how the players respond to it. Uh, Daniel Jones is going to be a career backup from this point moving forward. It just took him a long time to finally get to that decision. 
Yeah, I mean, I disagree. This is not about Dable trying to show what he can do. This is all about okay. the injury settlement that would be there if he gets injured. $23 million. And the NFLPA has to step in this offseason and stop this. Because they did it last year in Denver with Russell Wilson. He's playing good football. Now, no, Daniel Jones has not been playing well. But don't sit here and tell me this is a football decision. We're going to Tommy mm-hmm. DeVito, who we know cannot play. At <laughs> least with Daniel Jones, you can use his athleticism. He gives you a better chance than Drew Locke. He gives you a better chance than Tommy DeVito. This is about $23 million. And this should not be allowed in the NFL. It does not sit right with me. I don't think he's good. And, yeah, I'm a Charlotte guy just like him. So I'm going to stand up for the dude even if he went to Duke and he went to Latin. It's just wrong. And it's, this is not what the NFL should be allowing. The Giants, quite honestly, should be fine. Any team that does this moving forward, you lose draft picks. They, the PA's got to stop, step in and stop this nonsense. If it's, it'd be different if truly they had better options. They don't. DeVito sucks. And so does Locke. And so does Jones. But Jones is better than, all th- than the other two. It's ridiculous to me. Honestly, it is. Julian Council, you just did something. This shows y'all that this show ain't. I mean, we we do talk about and do we do pre plan, but we leave it open. Julian Council just hit us with a whole different angle that I didn't even think about. And shame on you, Giants. I'm on the side with Julian. Shame on y'all for doing this foolishness, even though he probably should have been benched a long time ago. I'm gonna let y'all know. You can check us out. Make sure you hit us up on Amazon Music. You can see the Locked On NFL Show. Make sure you also tap into Locked On NFL. In the morning with Tyler Rowland, the madman, he's going to wake you up. If you if you don't do anything else, you're going to get woke up when you listen to Tyler Rowland talk about the NFL with the use of local experts that know your team just like no one else does. And then you slide by the barbershop and you get this. Julian Council telling you why the Giants ought to be shaming themselves for what they're about to do to Daniel Jones. All right. We got more all week. Uh, anticipate a lot of things, a lot of movement happening. Make sure you check in with your podcast, your Locked On NFL podcast from your favorite team, because a lot of things can be shaken uh, going down uh, at the end of the season. For Julian Council, for Tony Wiggins here on Locked On NFL, make sure y'all tap in uh, every single day. Take care of each other. We'll do the same. Falcons stink. <laughs> He's still talking about the Falcons. That's my boy. That is my guy.